We have been working since about 2000 on autonomous systems. The unique thing is really the idea that some environmental factor can trigger the material to behave in a new way. And so whether it be temperature or some electrochemical event, maybe in a battery, or a mechanical damage event like in our self-healing polymers. A lot of schemes for repair of materials involve either physically repairing it, so you you know you break a vase and you have to physically glue it back together, or sometimes you can remend materials by heating them or welding them back together. But that all requires that you find the crack and you intervene. So our systems are really much like a passive biological system. It's just waiting for a stimulus, and you have a reaction that occurs in an independent and automatic fashion, so there's no human intervention. This is a, a topic that we sort of pioneered years ago now in polymers, uh, and these are materials that uh, when they get damaged, they heal themselves. We started with microcapsules that we uh, formulate and fabricate in the lab, and then we integrate those into new material systems. They are solid-like, but if you squeeze them between two slides, then you can see that there's a reasonable quantity of liquid that is present in that what appears to be a solid material. You have capsules that stay essentially metastable in the material until the environment causes a stress that causes them to rupture, release their contents, and the science is in what comes out and basically reacts. We started with self-healing paints and coatings. And these are coatings that you would put on a metal is something that you'd like to protect. And these kinds of coatings will uh, heal themselves when they've got scratch damage. The end result is a much longer lifetime for whatever you've, you've uh, put the paint onto. One of our projects sort of on the way to self-healing, we developed polymers that are force sensitive. So when you pull on them, they change color to indicate they're getting overstressed. And that really comes from taking a very small molecule that's force sensitive, and that molecule we call it a mechanophore, and insert it right in the backbone of the polymer. And it's actually due to what, what's called a mechanochemical reaction. Normally when you stretch a polymer, the only mechanochemical reaction goes on is that you have bond scission, it breaks. But in this case, you generate this color change before it breaks to tell you that it's overloaded. Ideally, you have a sensing mechanism that says, oh, we're getting close to a failure point. And then you also have a healing mechanism if it does manage to get damaged. Our self-healing materials operate on a very similar concept. The liquid that's in the microcapsule is ruptured by damage, and the liquid will travel by capillary action into the crack plane. The damage exposes both the catalyst and ruptures and releases the contents in the microcapsules and eventually forms a solid polymer that will rebond the interfaces of that crack back together. We've done a lot of work to, instead of just restoring the strength or the stiffness of a material, we've devised methods of putting conductive things in capsules. So we've put things like liquid gallium or encapsulating carbon nanotubes and nanoparticles of silver, all for their conductive restoration properties. It's really interesting because capsules are simple, they're scalable. We can make them really small to submicron, even nanometer length scales. but if you have small capsules, they only have a small amount of contents. And so if you have a really large crack to heal, a small capsule isn't going to help you out. So our initial foray into microvascular systems was for repeated healing, long-term healing of those systems by circulating healing agents. In 2007, we demonstrated that the vascular system has the ability to continuously heal, but we didn't really have a very practical means of manufacturing it. Now that we have the sacrificial fiber manufacturing approach, we have the ability to make a vascular system so much easier. And immediately when you have that ability, you start thinking of the many applications and new functions that can be introduced. The, the door is really open there because you don't just have to heal. You can do things like cool that material system or heat it, or you could actuate it and have it move. There's a whole host of functions that we can do right now, and that's all predicated on microvascular material systems. In our previous work on self-healing, we'd always been working with the tiny cracks that occur over the lifetime of the structure so that it never becomes this critical flaw that would lead to a catastrophic failure. We've been looking at large-scale damage events now, 
ballistic impact, drilling holes in, in sheets of plastic, and, and these sorts of things where significant mass is lost. Self-healing has no way of approaching that problem at all. The materials that would be used to heal that hole would simply fall out, bleed out under gravity. So we've come up with a system that actually can close that entire hole completely and truly regenerate that material that's been lost. The way we overcome gravity is to develop a chemical system into very stable channel networks that has a gelation that happens very quickly. And that gel-like material doesn't bleed out and will harden with the passage of time. Having simple material systems that are able to restore damage will make those materials last longer and make a contribution to the environment. Our entire career has been built on uh, making devices last longer so that you don't have to keep making them over and over again. So why would you want to make them degrade? Well, one natural reason is just to reduce the amount of waste that we produce. And you also can uh, ultimately recycle them completely and, and make a new device out of them. So the devices that we make are temperature sensitive. So at some magic temperature, something happens to them that allows them to completely disintegrate. You can imagine a whole plethora of different types of uh, stimuli, including electromagnetic waves or mechanical vibrations and, and so forth that would lead to the destruction of these kinds of devices. So, our future is making materials that are more functional and sustainable.